What's up, Calvin gang? Uh, we got a physics problem on our hands today. And uh, yeah, let's just go ahead and solve it. All right, so you are holding a rope that is connected to these, uh, these boxes and you're lowering them down the ramp and it, you, know, you got some friction going on. And uh, the first part is asking you like, how much force are you applying if you're going down the ramp at uh, 15 centimeters a second? So let's go ahead and solve that, okay. We need a force body diagram, don't we? All right, let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so let's go ahead and make it for like the, the whole system of boxes here, assuming that they just stick together, because they do. So you got this, all right, so this is force applied, right? Force tension or whatever, I'm just gonna say force applied. And because you're lowering it down the ramp, uh, the friction is gonna be going back up at you. So force of friction. Um, I'm also doing this at like a 90 degree, or I'm doing it this at the angle of that. So force normal is gonna go against you know, perpendicular to the surface, and then force gravity is gonna go down like this. Okay, there's your there's your forces, but we need to know these angles, right? We need to know what angle this degree is at. So, of course, to do that, you can do tangent of theta is equal to opposite over adjacent, so 2.5 over 4.75, and then theta will be equal to the inverse tangent of this, 2.5 over 4.75, which is equal to 27.76, right? 27.76 degrees. All right, that's important to know. I'm gonna write that down. Okay, so we know that that angle, because of like triangles, is gonna be the same as this angle, 27.76. Okay, good. Let's go ahead and find the forces. So we wanna know the force applied here, and we know a couple things, right? So it says we're going at a constant speed, which means that our acceleration is equal to zero. So when we go ahead and write out, the sum of our forces, that's a sum sign, oh man. Good handwriting me. The sum of our forces is equal to mass times acceleration, but because acceleration is equal to zero, the sum of our forces is equal to zero. So that helps a lot, less things to figure out. So we have our degree here. So what do we need to know? Well, let's see. We're seeing what is the force going, like, you know, in this direction? What is force applied? So normal force is perpendicular to that. It's not gonna have any effect on that, right? But we still need to calculate it for another step. What we do need, though, is force friction and force of gravity. So let's go ahead and figure this out. Okay, so let's see. Let's just go ahead and write out. So we're looking for the force applied. So it's gonna be force applied plus force of friction minus the force of gravity, but not just the whole force of gravity, only the force of gravity that's going in the x direction that's pushing against this. So if you're looking at this force, if you're looking at this triangle here, it's gonna look like uh, this. It's a right triangle. This is our 27.76 degrees. And we know that force of gravity is the hypotenuse here. And the hypotenuse is mass times acceleration. Our mass is uh, 80 and our acceleration is 9.81. What does that mean? I don't know. Uh, I didn't write it down, did I? Oh man. Hold up, calculator time. Okay. So this is 80 times 9.81. That means that, wait, why am I doing this? Hold on a second. I don't know, this is force of gravity. I don't need to do this yet. This is force of gravity. And then we want this one, right? This is the same thing that's pushing against that. This is force of gravity times um, sine of theta. And we know because um, sine of theta is equal to the opposite over adjacent, so this is gonna be this number here over force of gravity. So you move the force of gravity over and it'll give you this. This, you know. Okay, so that means that this is force of gravity sine of theta, and we know that this is all equal to zero because there's no acceleration. Okay, so what next? Well, we need to figure out what all these are too. So force applied, oh, obviously that's what we're trying to figure out. But then force of friction, what is force of friction? Well, we know that force of friction is equal to our co coefficient, uh, our friction coefficient, and then force normal. Okay, well, what is force normal? Well, force normal, if we were not on a slanted surface, it'd be equal to uh, the force of gravity, which we figured out, but we don't need, you know, that's not what it is, actually. What it is, is it's this component. We found the like the x component of gravity. We need to find the y component of gravity. As you can see, force normal pushes away this way, and then the y component of gravity pushes this way. 
and we know that they're going to be equal because the box isn't like flying up or falling down, it's stuck there. Okay, so force is normal is equal to force of gravity, but then it's going to be cosine of theta because it's this side here. And so yeah, you can find that out by doing, um, you know, uh, cosine of theta is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse and then moving the hypotenuse over to the other side. That's how you math do it mathematically. Okay, so then we have force of friction is equal to coefficient of friction, force of gravity, cosine of theta. Okay, so we can go put this in here. Uh, friction, coefficient of friction, force of gravity, cosine of theta, minus force of gravity, sine of theta is equal to zero. Okay, now we can move things around, figure something out. Let's do that. Let's move everything to the other side because we're looking for force applied. So it's going to be equal to negative coefficient of friction, force of gravity, cosine of theta, plus force of gravity, sine of theta. Okay, uh, here we can do a couple things, but let's just uh, let's just plug in away now. Okay, so our coefficient of friction is 0.444, negative 0 0.444, force of gravity, we found that earlier, to be um, 784, right? and then cosine of theta, so it's cosine of our degree there, so 27.76. And then plus force of gravity again, 784.8, sine of 27.76. And then if you plug this all into your calculator, which I will do right now because I want to make sure that I'm correct, you'll get uh, an answer. <laughs> 0.444, cosine 27.76, plus 784.8, Sine of 27.76. Uh, please tell me. Yes, I did it, guys. I actually got the right number for once. Okay, and this is equal to, what is this, 57.19 newtons. Not McDonald's. Can you see that? Yeah, you can see that. 57.19 newtons of force. Great. That's how much force he's applying. Okay, what's the next part of this problem? What is the magnitude and direction of the force on the upper box? Okay, we need another force body diagram. Let's go. All right, this should be a lot easier. Uh, I probably don't need any of this. Let's get rid of it all. I'll keep that though. Okay, part two. On the upper box, let's do another force body diagram. Okay, so here, of course, force gravity, force of normal. And what else? Force of friction. So another thing we know, this box is also not accelerating. It's stuck to the top of the other box. So we know that all these forces are gonna be in, uh, they're gonna be equal to each other, basically. The sum of them all is gonna be zero. Uh, and that's a good thing. That means it's not moving. So the sum of our forces is going to be equal to zero. And our forces are going to be, um, let's see, what are we looking for? Oh yeah, we should probably do this too. Okay. Um, so our friction force, uh, what's pushing against our friction force? Well, the force normal, like we talked about earlier, that's what I was uh, confused about for just a second. Our force normal is perpendicular to our friction force, meaning it doesn't actually really act on the friction force at all more of just, uh, you know, does its thing there. Wait, and we're trying to find the magnitude direction of the friction force on the upper box. Wait, why was I doing it like that? Okay, I didn't do anything wrong. <laughs> I'm just confusing myself because it's a lot simpler than I think it is. Okay, so what we can say is the force of friction minus the force of gravity, but just the x component, right? So this is the theta that we know. And then if you look at it, this is the cosine, or this is the sine, because it's the opposite, and this is equal to zero. That's saying that this, this angle here, this, this right here, is equal to this right there. They're pushing against each other, that's why it's not moving, or that's why it's not accelerating. So then you can say force of friction is equal to force of gravity sine of theta, and of course we found this stuff earlier. Let's just plug it in, sine 27.76. 
Uh, that's not right. Oh, I know what I did wrong. Okay. Force of gravity. It's only the upper box. So force of friction. Oh, this is a bad marker. Forgive me. Force of friction is equal to force of gravity. Mass times acceleration, 32 kilograms. Uh, times acceleration, 9.81. Sine of 27.76. And this is actually equal to the number we want, which is 126 newtons, or 146 newtons. There you go. That's how you solve this problem. Sorry it took me so long on the easiest step, of course, because uh, I'm a little, a little confused right now. But I get it, all right? So there you go. That's how you solve this problem. Uh, good luck on your physics homework, guys.